Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a great time celebrating the new year. I know we're all looking forward to it. You know, one thing we can take away from having a rough year in 2020, we're looking forward to all the good and hope that comes with a new year. So that's where I choose to place my mindset. And I'm very excited for things to come in the new year. And I hope you can be as well. So grateful for y'all. You fulfill my desire to teach others. So I hope I'm helpful and you enjoy this as much as I do. Just a few updates. I'm kind of a late morning getting started this morning again. Thankfully my critters are very forgiving to an extent try to be too late. Good morning. Hey everybody. Come on Curly Sue. Hey there. Good morning. Hi. Hey. Hey beautiful. Hi. Good morning. Sweetest. Go. Jump. updates on what we have going on around here different things we're going to be talking about in the near future as I mentioned last week we did our famacha checks with the goats and we ended up only having to dose s'more here and biscuit and they were both a three on the famacha scores which is not bad if they don't have any other symptoms but they did they do have kind of a dullness to their coat, which can happen in the winter some too, but a little more than I would like to see. And Biscuit, have we've learned, is a little prone to a uh, higher worm load. Hey, love, here's some more. He's doing good. Hey, handsome. Good morning. He's doing really good. So we hope to see some improvement in his coat condition and his little body weight soon so that went well sorry i didn't get to show you guys biscuits uh dosing and the matcha check she's a little spitfire so that was a little hard to video i do have some updates on our new buckling he's doing really well the breeder has decided to keep him intact. He is a perfect example of the Nigerian dwarf breed. So he is going to be used as our herd sire to better the breed, pass on some good genetics. And we are so excited to get him here on our farm. He'll be coming home to us in a matter of four, well, actually three to five weeks. Um, he is being bottle fed currently. So we will probably continue to bottle feed him for a few more weeks when we get him here. He'll be our first bottle baby on the farm. So we're looking forward to that. One of our exciting changes that'll be coming to the farm soon. My husband and I were talking about our new pen additions. And that's our first priority is to get our goat pen additions completed. So we'll be doing that very soon. This week proved to be pretty crazy around here. It was exciting and all in a good way with the new year rolling in. So that put a little pause on the barn improvements for now, but we're gonna roll right into it in the coming weeks and bring y'all along the way. We're excited to do that. All we have left to get in regards to the supplies for our goat pen edition are the gates and our fencing. And we're actually going to be adding a gate to the current uh, half of our goat pen. I'll show y'all what we plan to do. We're going to mimic each pen to our main goat pen area because it's proved to be very functional. We like how it's set up and the goats do really well. So we're going to get them some entertainment built in in their shelters. It's going to be a kind of a multi-purpose shelter 
uh, something for them to get exercise on, to have a dry place, a high dry place to get our, when it rains here, our ground gets really wet and their hooves just don't do very well in that wet ground, not having a place to just get out of the moisture. Their stalls help, but we'd like to have a spot where they can get dry without having to get in the barn and get it all dirty. So we're gonna try to make some things a little more efficient around here, a little better for their care. We also have our uh, first milk stand coming soon. So I'll show that to y'all when I get it and I'll make sure and give y'all honest review. We decided to go with one that was pre-made and not making our own just because we don't have access or the skill for the materials to make one like we would like. We like the metal grate of the pre-made stanchions because it's just easier to clean, a little bit more sanitary. Not that the other ones aren't by any means, but I like the open grate material as opposed to the wood. I just feel like, and I don't know for sure, but I feel like we're gonna really like that. So we'll try it out and if we don't, then we may move on to a homemade version because as you know, I like to make my own things. So like our coop here, we've really enjoyed it and it's turned out really good. So we'll see, we're gonna give that a try and maybe our second one, we'll do our own little DIY, so we'll see. We plan to have two does bred per breeding season, so we'll end up having six does total. Right now we have four, and we'll rotate fall and spring breeding seasons between a pair at a time. That's our plan for now. We'll see how that goes, and I will keep y'all posted on that. So let's go feed these babies. I hear them in there talking to us. Hey ladies. Hey Muffin. Are you on Biscuit's bucket? And Biscuit, you're on Muffin's bench. I see you. Hey ladies. Was it cold last night? It got a little chilly. Oh no ma'am. Where are you going? And by chilly I mean 34 which is a little chilly here. We had a nice little frost on the ground last night. Hey loves, go me to sniff. Come here, give me to sniff. Thank you. Hey babies, let's go see the girls, the little girls. Good morning. Hi, hey Sprinkles. She is coming around so nicely. Hey, hey Maple. Oh, Jill is here. Got to have her loving too. Oh my goodness, it's just rough being this sweet, isn't it? Let's love on these babies for a second. Hey girls. Hey Biscuit. Oh girls, yes. Oh, you so silly. It's you just scratching. show her the attention she thinks she deserves, you get a headbutt. You silly girl. I see you. I see you. I know. These are the best goats. We have just absolutely fallen in love with this Nigerian dwarf breed. They're the sweetest. I cannot wait to see how much we love having their milk around. Oh my goodness, Muffin. You just are needy today. Oh, good morning. Hi. Sprinkles. What you doing over here? Hey, baby. She's so pretty. With your heart on her back. This sweet girl has a heart on her back. Let's go look. Excuse me, Maple. Maple here stands in front of the gate because she just loves this attention so much. See that little heart right there? Oh, she might not let us see it. There's her heart on her back. I am just tickled. I love little sweet markings like that. We have enjoyed having her around. And this girl right here, and we're interrupting her laying time. Wow, she got busy. We just let them out. And look, this girl's laid an egg already. Look at, look at there. 
You just got through visiting with me and you came straight in here. Mama waited too late. We have really healthy, happy chickens and it shows. Our egg production, even though we've had some cold, has really gone up. They are just, I guess, maturing a little bit. They're young and they're really growing into their little routine. And of course, they found their oddball laying spot that has proven to be really productive, even though it's not in our coop, but that's okay. As long as they don't hide their eggs, we're good. We are so excited to have these fresh eggs. I made a delicious batch of French toast this morning with our eggs and you just can't beat it. I have some plans for them later today for some other recipes. I love a fresh egg. As you see our Christmas tree we put out here for the girls. The chickens seem to be enjoying it too. I had no idea they would enjoy it as much as they are. Goats do really well with evergreen plants. It serves as a natural, um, sort of a natural dewormer and they really enjoy the taste of it. Biscuit here is our branch and limb specialist. She really enjoys the roughage of a good oak branch and dry leaves or green leaves. We just give them that sparingly to allow them to have that foraging experience that they really like. We always cut some more off some and give him some in his pen as well. We are so excited to have this extra space that we're gonna be adding soon. Let me show y'all the gates that we plan on using for each of the pens and I'll show you our current setup. So right now we're looking into the goat barn. It's a little bit of a mess right now. This is our, our temporary test shelter here that we're gonna be adding a permanent structure. The girls like to hang out there. So in the barn, we ha currently have a four foot gate here and the divider that I've shown you guys before, it splits down the middle. And in this space, we're gonna have a two stall divided area, five by five each with the cattle panels, which is similar to this wire panel on the bottom of this gate here. It's the same kind of dimensions with the smaller openings at the bottom and graduating into the bigger openings. So we'll use that as the fencing material in here, the stall dividers, and then I will frame out the same material with some two by four or one by four material, something to that effect, maybe even a little smaller one by three to have a gate that's not doesn't have the sharp edges so we'll do a narrow gate probably a two foot two and a half foot gate for each stall just to allow for more room but it's plenty big enough for us to move in and out of to do what we need and then we'll have this area open here hey biscuit say where is my breakfast i'm sorry girl just give me a minute so this we have a solid wood door to close the barn off i plan to build another one to match i built this one it closes off the bottom like a Dutch door and I'm gonna make one for the upper area to have it, the ability to close off if needed. You see along the top below the rafters here, we have this open, nice ventilation area. So there's no need to worry about having these two doors closed. There's plenty of ventilation in the top of this barn. So we did that. This is a poplar material that we got from a local sawmill and it's, it's weathered really beautifully. We really like it. So right to the right of the barn, if you're looking at the base with the door, we have this longer eight foot gate. This will remain to divide these two pastures. We put these little blocks here because the babies like to try to escape and go visit the other goats. But this will be our main pasture area for all of our mamas and babies that we can leave this open and they can have a little more room if needed. So turning around back toward the house, which is the north side of our property, we'll have an identical pasture on this end. So we will connect to these corner posts here as well as the bottom down here with another corner post on each side on the north end, there and there. And then we'll add an additional gate to the east side to match this main pasture area here and I'm gonna go show you that now. All right, this is looking toward the west. Here's our house over here to the north, and that's where our second addition, I showed you that just because I was facing that way. That's gonna be the second addition, additional pasture that we do on this side. It'll include this oak tree right here closest to us, so they'll have some little forage there, some extra shade, so it'll be really nice. And there's a little more dirt in this area, and I'm hoping that Biscuit, she has a little bit of some allergy tendencies that we're gonna try to alleviate with moving her to a little 
enclosure that's a little less grassy because she gets plenty hay grass and um, alfalfa. We're also going to be switching from our compressed bales to hopefully whole bales. And or there's a brand of alfalfa that has a little bit of molasses mixed in it called Forage. We've really liked that in the past and she's proved to be a little more tolerant of that with her little, she gets a little hacky cough and it's more dust related, I believe. So we're just trying to narrow that down. So that's a goal there to try that pasture for her. So this one, this gate is an eight foot gate with the wire bottom. It has the two by four squares, it's all small. A lot less likely that anybody's gonna stick their head through that. So we really like these. In the future, we'll probably purchase these gates for safety reasons. Goats are just little mischievous boogers. These chickens are really loving this tree. This is hilarious. We've got these two posts here. These are retired telephone poles. Of course, we stripped any ground wires off of them, any staples that were remaining from their old use. And they are extremely sturdy and extremely rot resistant. So we'll do a two post gate setup on the opposite side here. This will be a modification we make to this pasture. It's just easier instead of having to go down to that lower gate on the side of the barn to try to get in here to do maintenance with the lawnmower or anything to that effect. There's our little blocks to keep some more out of his passageway into his stall. So one of those stalls in the divided area will have access to this pasture. So each pasture will have barn access. Currently, S'more is staying in his dog loo right there in his shelter here. So he's been super happy. He does not like not being able to see anybody at night because everybody goes in the barn and he's not happy about that. But we're going to fix that for him. So over here on the south side of the goat pen, we'll add, like I explained on the other side, the extra post. We'll come off of this one and most likely put two posts for the gate. So we'll have a section here, a smaller wire fence section a post for the gate, the gate, another post, and then a corner post at the east side here at the top end down there to match up with the lower post here. So all the goats will be able to see their friends, share the fence, and we'll rotate. We'll have a pasture resting at all times once we're finished. Right now we check their FAMACHA score a little more frequently because being that they're in the same areas most of the time right now, it creates an envir environment that may be a little more conducive to them having a higher worm load. So we'll try to maintain that a little better with the separate pastures. Hi, S'more. Hey, handsome fella. You are sure handsome. These blue eyes are gorgeous. Hey, buddy, are you ready for your new friend? He is going to be so excited to have his new little buck friend. Oh, he's so pretty. There's his Christmas tree snippings. There's his ball. I have to, I'll put the link below to this. It's a Jolly Ball, I believe is the name. It's a little small horse ball. It's the smaller one. He loves this. We have it tied up high with a cotton rope where he can't, you know, be in any danger of getting caught up in it. He had butts this thing all the time. That's his magnolia tree. Hey, love. Good time, somebody. So that's our plans coming up in the near future. That's our next steps on the farm here. We're excited to share our process of adding on these new pastures for our goats and to show y'all the difference it makes having them some more room and the ability to rotate through these pastures and how they do with the different grassy areas and their worm load. And I'll keep track of their FAMACHA scores and see what the difference is between now and when we have their extra space for them. Let y'all know how that goes. That is our next project is the goat pen. We'll have our milk stanchion coming in in the meantime, hopefully around the same time frame. I'll be sharing more about that as soon as it arrives. And then our new buckling will be here. Of course, I'll share that with you guys. And as always, if you have any questions or anything you would like to know specifically about the projects that we're doing that I talk about here on our channel, leave a message in the comments below and I'll make sure to catch up on those and answer any questions you may have. I love teaching you guys and I hope this can be a useful resource for you. As I've searched before for many resources, I will try to include everything that I can and answer y'all's questions. Our next steps in the near future, but not quite as near as our goat pen updates, going to be doing our chicken run. That's probably the next big project. 
And during that time, I'll be placing my order for my hawk deterrence. And I will make sure and share that with you guys. It's so exciting. All right, I'm headed back to the house. And I'm actually going to dig into some gardening plans. I don't want to say my first garden. I had a really good start to a, about a medium-sized garden when I was pregnant with my first son. He's now 14. So it's been a minute. So we're going to call it a round two of the first garden, but I have pretty big plans for this year and hopefully in years to come, probably some really yummy recipes to go with them too. I love trying new recipes, especially with stuff that you grow at your home. It's way more exciting that way. I'll give y'all a little peek at my lettuce real quick that I've been practicing with on my front porch in my little containers. It seems to be doing well. Some red romaine used it a, a few times on different things and it's so good. Thanks again for being here. We'll share more with you as we go along. Mm -hmm.